Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So I'm surprised I'm not seeing more naturals on YouTube talking about this. So apparently I'm going to be the first one. But just letting you know in case you haven't heard, Shea Moisture is about to be not black owned. Richie Lou is about to have a boss. So if you want to hear more about that, <laughs> stay tuned. Trini Girl Natural. So apparently Unilever is about to purchase Shea Moisture, so it's about to finally officially not be black owned. So I wanted to come on and just first of all let you guys know and also give you my thoughts. I have to sit back and like think about it because you know if you saw my previous Shea Moisture video, you know that Shea Moisture has been cancelled for me and they have been acting strange. I came out of timing as we say in Trinidad for a while now. So it was kind of like, you know, something happened to somebody that maybe <laughs> for whatever reason you are estranged from and you're like, do I care? How do I feel about this? I start with we have to look at those words black owned and see like what it means for you, what it means for me. Of course, if you don't care about black owned businesses at all, you can just sign out because that's what we're going to be talking about here right now. Black owned to me is more than just the person who owns the company happening to be black. Of course it's great like in a country with a history of oppression against black people and discrimination against black people. It's great to see any black person being successful and living comfortably and stuff like that. So like all my small businesses that I support, I just, I'm glad to see them thrive and succeed but for me it's more than that i don't just support somebody because they're black i support somebody because they're black like they know they're black they consider themselves black they care about other black people they're giving back to the black community they're talking about issues affecting the black community they're being honest they're being upfront they're being vocal they're letting our voices be heard they're also fighting against systemic discrimination and systematic discrimination by trying to help other black people who have been discriminated against so example in hiring i expect that they will give black employees and black potential employees a fair shake networking with black suppliers if they exist and black marketing teams if they exist giving black people some access at every point of their business relationships so I expect you to be giving back to the community and I expect you to be building black so giving back black building black caring black as I said being vocal about things that are happening in the community or at least not throwing in our face like Shea Moisture where they're part they're sorry about Brussels and they don't care about Nigeria at least if you don't care about the black community at least be silent overall and don't care about Europe more than you care about brown and black countries at the very least, I expect you to be conscientious of your black customers, especially if your market base is primarily black customers. Try not to say things that are offensive, dismissive, discriminatory. Just try not to actually hurt, literally hurt your customers. I don't think that's asking too much. When I say giving back, I'm not just talking about making little tax deductible contributions here or there or treating your global suppliers half decently i'm talking about it more as like a lifestyle so you can't tell me that you are black conscious and then go on tv and say these black women these um what do you call them again these handmaidens owe me something and stuff like that it doesn't work that way like he is so see through to me so Shea Moisture for me might have had a black man owning it but hasn't been black owned in terms of the whole total package that I look for to say that I'm supporting a black owned company for a while now as you saw in my last video. So it's kind of a relief for me that we can finally stop pretending that Shea Moisture is for the people just because it's owned by a black person. I'm not saying you can't work with everyone, I'm just saying don't betray, don't sell out your own people to do that. Trying to sell white hair hate for example. There was no need to try to co-op the natural hair movement because that's what you know and you know because of us. If you want to have someone invest in you but you didn't have a history of kind of being weird and shady towards black women, maybe people would have taken it a little better. Even back then with being, most people still gave you the benefit of the doubt. So that wasn't the nail in the coffin. But as it is now, you already kind of ragged on black women. You already lost their trust to a lot of them and a lot of people have already cancelled your brand so your brand is floundering your individual brand like how people perceive you as floundering people are lacking trust in you that's not the time to sell unless you are completely jumping ship from business ownership and 
you know, that isn't the smartest move. So the issue is not expanding. The issue is not being invested in. The issue isn't even selling. The issue is, again, completely how you go about it and what you're doing with your company and what you're trying to achieve in the end. A lot of people are like, yeah, that's good for him. That's what you should do, just sell your company. But those who understand wealth know that money isn't wealth. Every day, money is losing value due to inflation and a bunch of other things. So equity is wealth, you know, investments are wealth. And I'm sure he's probably investing it, but compared to the profits he could have made with an actual functioning company, Investments most likely are not going to get him there, most likely, you know, because they are kind of hedged against risk and so on. The other people, other groups, they're not doing that. If they sell their company, best believe they're about to create a better company or another company. But he already trashed his brand as a person and as a company. So what other company can he create at this point? So basically, black people don't trust him. There isn't even a reason for non-black people to want to buy his stuff. He isn't like a celebrity hairstylist or a scientist or... There's no reason for anybody to trust him, basically. And as you can see, after black women kind of cancelled Shea Moisture, the other people didn't pick up the slack. I don't want to use the word culture vulture, but just from being in the groups, a lot of the appeal of Shea Moisture was the fact that it was perceived as cool and happening with the black women. So, you alienated a black woman, black woman moved on, now the non-black woman are like, I guess this ain't so cool no more, let me get some diva curl, let me get some um, brioche or whatever else they're using. So even if he comes with another company, who's buying it? The next problem too is not just selling, but who he sold to. So Unilever as a brand seems to go against everything that he stands for. So for example, fair trade, they're not fair trade, animal testing, they do that. So you have like a big thing about fair trade, you have a big thing about cruelty free and then you sell to an overall umbrella that doesn't care about these things and actually actively do the opposite of these things and already have brand damage for these things. So how is that going to work? Like how, who's going to trust you? You are supposed to be pro-black and pro-melanin while they're making their money selling bleaching creams in India and Southeast Asia and other countries around the world. You're supposed to be pro globalization and pro supporting developing economies and they're out there exploiting developing economies so like just in terms of choice it just doesn't seem to make sense and it doesn't seem to help your brand so your brand is already struggling based on your own personal choices and decisions and movements with Shea Moisture now you come and sell to a company that will further damage your reputation because the new market you want are gonna be like oh but I thought you were about cruelty free. How come you're selling to Unilever? So everybody's gonna be like, oh, what's going on? It just doesn't really work with your brand. But I'm sure maybe all the other possible conglomerates were just as bad, most likely, because that's how things are. But I'm just saying that with respect to Unilever, like all money isn't good money. And I don't know that this is good money for you and for your brand and for what you are trying to represent. And yes, Unilever has over 400 brands. So most likely we're all using them. We may or may not even know it, but that's different from actually attaching them to your brand or to your horse. So if I am all pro cruelty free, all animal rights, all pro melanin, all fair trade, and I attach myself to a company that's none of that, that's more significant damage to my reputation than if I as a consumer happen to be buying something from them without knowing or even knowing. So Unilever is pretty smart. They did get a black woman to be his new boss. Rachel Lou is supposed to continue on as CEO and continue making decisions. I don't know if we even want that personally, but you know, he's saying that he's gonna continue making decisions and nothing much is gonna change, which again, how is that a good thing? But regardless of who's making the decisions, the money is now going to Unilever. The money is going where it's going. Regardless of who's his new boss and how cool she is and how black she is, the money is now going where it's going. And it's just a matter of, does that concern you or not? He is making all the usual claims and promises he always makes. Formula ain't gonna change. Uh-huh. Formula never changed. Okay. I don't know what he's saying about animal testing and fair trade and all that. I don't think anybody's even asked him that much because most people seem to just care about whether the products are going to pop and lay their hair or not. But it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. We already saw 
changes in his focus after being and now it's completely not black owned anymore so I can imagine the changes that are going to be coming up regardless of what he says. In addition to selecting a black person to be his boss, they then create this fund for men of color entrepreneurs called the New Voices Fund and they plan to invest 50 million in it and also to encourage other investors. So that's great. Um, the typical venture capital company invests 7 million in just one business so maybe this might set up 8 women let's say, 8 to 10 women but most likely they're going to probably be looking at smaller businesses which to me kind of shows what they think about us in a way like oh we're just black people are just good for like mom and pop businesses so 50 million should do it or 50 million is all we have to spend on them or they're going to think 50 million is a lot but to me the number kind of says more also about how they think about black people and their capabilities and to me it just is something to just kind of sweeten the deal and make it more palatable to their customer base and kind of try to keep some of their customers but of course it's a great thing and it's money and I wouldn't advise anyone to turn it down um, it just has a bit of a side eye for me as well but I'll be looking at it I'll be looking to see if it ever happens who benefits from it if anybody is ever is ever successful from it and stuff like that some people ask like why you have it on brands that you supposedly support so i am harder on brands that i support because i have expectations i'm not just supporting them i see myself as investing in them and if they're not gonna give back then for me like what's the point i'm just expecting you to be a good corporate citizen or in the case of black owned businesses help black people to overcome the struggle that we've been given <laughs> so i don't think that that's asking too much i do actively invest in them whether it's paying slightly higher prices or even a lot higher prices or whether it's just inconvenience in purchasing maybe i have to purchase online or maybe i have to go to really fast stores or maybe i don't like the products quite as much or something something but i am going the extra mile for them in the hopes that they will go the extra mile for us so it's not just supporting them just because there's a reason behind it and I want to see them keep up their end. I'm not out there supporting brands I don't have expectations from. I don't have any brand loyalty to them. I would switch in a minute, something cheaper comes up, I would do that or something more convenient, something like. But if I am, if I am actually focusing significant money or time or whatever in your business, I expect that you would go out there and make me proud and not just by making money for yourself but by doing good for the community. So for me, especially hair products, most of the products, 99% of the products that I buy are black owned and I'm hoping that I'm doing some good for my community indirectly and I'm really happy to see that the people that I support, they acknowledge their blackness, they speak on black issues, they try to elevate the community and try to give back and so on. So I can say that I'm really proud of the brands that I buy from, whether it be Elodia, whether it be Curls and Potions, whether it be Sultanicals. And that's what I would have liked to see more from Shea Moisture and from Richie Lou. But at the end of the day, it is his or was his company to do it as he sees fit. It is an interesting tale. Started out selling products out of a bag and now he's with 240 million good for him he gave up future profits for a cash lump sum now and at least to me his credibility in the natural hair business world is, is damaged so starting another business will be difficult that cash lump sum isn't going to be as profitable as future profits from this company Otherwise, you never wouldn't have bought it. So, I don't know what's going to happen next. I guess we'll see. The saga is ongoing. But it definitely is another chapter in the book of business, product ownership, black-owned businesses, and natural hair companies. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Most times, I'm having fun and doing product reviews. But when something happens, I want to let you know about it. Let me know if you heard about this before. And let me know what you think. Share my share, not black owned. Let me know what you think of that. And let me know if you care. Let me know if you support black businesses or if you just don't even care. <laughs> let me know in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. 
Let's keep it civil. I will see you in the next one. Bye.